So let's start. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, this is the second day of our uh, transnational learning journey. And uh, now today we are going to talk uh, uh, about the policy context of the region and have a peer review uh, regarding our uh, uh, public uh, uh, policy. So we will start with the presentation of Bachelet's policy uh, contest. Then we will <laughs> we will uh, have a, a debate and a discussion. Um, and after that, uh, we also will have a presentation uh, regarding a specific uh, project that are being developed uh, by uh, Simbal in the region. But first, uh, I will pass the, the floor to, to Elsa that will make the presentation regarding the Bachelet Perche policy contest. So thank you. Okay, so I will start uh, with uh, an overview on the Baixal Entejo policy context. Um, I will try to keep it um, short, but nevertheless uh, trying to explain what is uh, now the policy context, knowing, of course, that we are in a kind of a transition period, what is uh, more or less the same to each country, to, to every country represented in our partnership. But of course, we are fully aware that it, make it, it makes it a little more complex, let us say. Trying to evolve from this first slide. So, okay. so um, our regional uh, development uh, operating program was called uh, and is still uh, Alentejo. 2020, and uh, I think someone has the mic on, please. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Alentejo 2020 focuses on developing an, econo an economy of knowledge and innovation for smart growth. Also with a focus on human resources as human resources are crucial for overcoming the uh, region's main weaknesses. Promoting sustainable growth and more efficient use of resources, Alentejo 2020 strategy is based upon the perspective of valorization of regional assets and the transition to a low carbon economy as we are, of course, facing the main objective of uh, 2050, of zero carbon economy. And also, Alentejo 2020 focuses on contribu contributing to inclusive growth uh, in strengthening the skills of the active population, learning and specialized technical training. This being said, we have four agendas, which are competitiveness and internationalization, human resources, 
social inclusion and employment and sustainability and resource efficiency. And these agendas uh, are, were and are still implemented through 10 pillars. Well, the, the next point is related to where LCA could have been used and where it still can be used. And some, these are, of course, uh, some hints that are based on the present, but focusing on the future programming period. And uh, that is why I was emphasizing this transition period that we are now living. So in what regards pillar one, we have competitiveness and internationalization of SMEs. Also in pillar three, research, technological development and innovation. On pillar four, urban sustainable development and on pillar eight, environment and sustainability. Of course, this uh, last uh, one I mentioned is kind of the most obvious one. Well, as I was saying, this, uh, this uh, presentation is pretty much focusing on the period we are uh, transitioning to. Uh, it should have started in 2021, but as we are all aware, it's uh, still under, under, well, implementation. Some things are to be approved yet. Uh, now the new program programming period is called Portugal 2030, and it materializes the partnership agreement between Portugal and the European Union, the European Commission, setting the major strategic objectives for the application between 2021 and 2027 of the global amount of 24 million 182 million euros, of course, from European regional development funds, European social fund, cohesion fund, fair transition fund, and the European maritime fisheries and aquaculture fund. This is uh, the um, distrib distribution of the money. Uh, this um, red, red uh, um, rectangles you see here, we have the, the names, let us say, of the, of the funds in Portugal, in Portuguese, sorry. So we start with the EFDR and, and so on. So the distribution is uh, this one. And of course, we uh, also have the funds for uh, territorial cooperation. Uh, that is uh, somehow uh, framing has uh, now. Okay. In what relates strategic objectives, we have a smarter Europe, a priority that focuses on investment in innovation, digitalization, business competitiveness, skills for smart specialization, industrial transition, and entrepreneurship. Then a second priority for a greener Europe. And this priority follows the state of climate emergency and also incorporates, as I was mentioning before, decarbonization goals by supporting innovation and in circular economy and thus contributing to sustainable production methods. In this topic, I once again would like to emphasize not only uh, the main goals of decarbonization for 2050, but also some pioneer initiatives that have been launched recently and that set up a, a, a target for some cities in Europe to implement decarbonization until 2030. So something that uh, I think that within this objective of priority for a greener Europe, we should follow and we should somehow monitor. 
then the priority for a more connected Europe uh, that is supporting connection between strategic transport networks and the implementation of new generation communication networks, supporting the digital transition. And uh, of course, the, as mentioned previously, the priority for a more social Europe, thus supporting education, equal access to healthcare. And this, of course, in the last couple of years has been a very important issue present in our day-to-day -day life. Quality employment, lifelong learning and social inclusion in line with the priorities that were set, set out in the European pillar for social rights. And finally, and I'm trying to move here, yeah, okay. And finally, the priority to a Europe that is closer to citizens, thus supporting development strategies at the local level, promoting social and territorial cohesion and supporting urban sustainable development. Now I'm going to uh, have um, to share with you a quick overlook on Baixoal Entejo's strategical development plan. This plan aims to materialize the integrated strategy for territorial de development for Baixoal Entejo in the three regions and is directly connected with the implementation of the programming period of the European structure, Structural and Investment Funds here in Portugal and uh, specifically in Baixo Alentejo region. This is a policy instrument that supports integration of regional step strategy and European objectives to, to a sub-regional level. And at the same time, it aims and it mobilizes European structural and investment fund resources uh, of local intermunicipal community to implement the strategy adopt adopted. So uh, in um, perhaps in less words, it's an instrument aiming to really have impact at this uh, sub-regional level. In the context of Baixoal Entejo strategic development plan, we identified the priority axis where LCA is meaningful and where it is to be uh, fully uh, uh, taken into consideration and adopted. Economic promotion of the endogenous potential infrastructure and environmental services network, energy efficiency and renewable energy promotion, and integrated asset and environment risk, environmental risk management. In what relates circular economy, which is um, something that uh, is uh, very important in the context of Symbol's uh, strategy and action, let us say, and we will have uh, later this, uh, this session, we will have two uh, interesting uh, presentations on this topic. We should mention uh, the strategic plan for urban waste 2014, to 2020, which is called PERSU 2020, which was approved under um, national law. And this plan sets national targets for urban waste prevention and also states the measures that are associated with accomplishing this objective. Also, the action plan for circular economy uh, materializes the ambition set out for Portugal 2015 
and uh, was designed to leverage and spur development of work within the action plan for circular economy and must be set by the various various ministries, civil society, and private organizations. So it's a comprehensive plan with ambitious goals. It consists of the following elements. A carbon neutral economy that is efficient and productive in its use of resources. So neutralizing the greenhouse gases emission and effect effective use of materials. Using knowledge as an impulse, focusing on research and innovation, creating solutions in products, services, business models, consumption and use and behaviors, changing behaviors. So uh, lowering emissions and uh, also lowering the resource intensity and integrated into business models that uh, somehow enable job creation and enable also efficient and effective use of mobilized resources and thus creating a more sustainable economic model. Consisting also of the following all elements, inclusive and resilient economic prosperity. So as I was saying, enabling uh, economic development in a sustainable way, impacting all sectors of society, and a resilience, a resilience, creating resilience against price and risk vol volatility, and re gradually re decoupling from negative environmental and social impacts. And here I should emphasize again, contributing to a more resilient society, more sustainable society. A flourishing, responsible, dynamic, and inclusive society. Uh, informative, informed, participative, and collaborative society where all participations are uh, needed and integrated. A society that uh, <clears throat> takes care of its participants. Uh, rather, rather than uh, only uh, having uh, uh, a top-down uh, a top-down approach, uh, combining top-down and bottom-up approaches, and uh, a society that takes care of its natural capital and of its social capital. So, trying to uh, sum up this. Um, action plan for circular economy within the context of uh, this uh, that I presented. We have carbon neutral, resource efficient and productive economy, using and uh, uh, taking knowledge as a background, which is inclusive, uh, resilient and promotes a prosperous and sustainable economy and also <clears throat> an inclusive, uh, responsible, and participative society. Going now to an aspect that was also very uh, much in line what we were discussing in yesterday's morning session, we have the National Strategy for the Ecological Public Procurement, which was also uh, approved by uh, our, our national government and provides that the inclusion of environmental uh, criteria in public procurement is mandatory. Moreover, it is an instrument uh, that uh, promotes the reduction of pollution uh, promotes also the reduction of the consumption and natu of natural resources and uh, intends and wants to enable the integration of efficiency in the system 
thus recognizing the importance and relevance of uh, public procurement in this context, as public procurement uh, is uh, responsible for a huge uh, amount of the purchases, uh, of course, uh, that are uh, taken uh, uh, in the context of the uh, overall um, purchasing process. Uh, in what regards um, Alentejo uh, specific uh, situation, and here please take into consideration that I am uh, talking now of the whole region. Uh, as you know, uh, Baixo Alentejo is a sub-region, Alentejo is the wider one, let us say. We have, uh, uh, in Alentejo, we have the Circular Economy Forum. Uh, and the Circular Economy Forum's main objective is to stimulate uh, this um, Alentejo region and Alentejo regional economy as a circular economy. It is a network of regional stakeholders taking public and private sector and taking also uh, the uh, science institutions. So uh, typically uh, um, a forum that takes into consideration the quadruple helix. And here we have the, um, the possibility to discuss uh, opportunities and constraints, constraints that are related to circular economy uh, in the region where solutions are discussed and where, uh, well, uh, co-creation is really uh, an issue. This was our presentation on our framework, let us say. Uh, so lots of time uh, still to uh, have uh, a discussion. Um, the, the, as you know, the agenda now uh, has uh, some space for this discussion. I have here some topics that can be taken into consideration, but uh, now um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's about uh, discussing in small groups. I suggest that uh, we can create, uh, if people online are willing and available, we can close the microphones and you can have uh, the room to discuss online, making a small group. Here in, in the room, I would suggest that uh, people mix up uh, uh, and create also three groups with the, the, the the countries mixed together, because I think we have here four countries represented. We should have uh, three uh, mixed groups. And I can uh, suggest, uh, I don't know, Sophia, 45 minutes for discussion. So we will, uh, after these 45 minutes, I will kindly ask uh, each group leader to make a small presentation of uh, two to three minutes, uh, either with PowerPoint or not, using these topics or others that you wish. So we, we have a very free, let us say, model now. If you want to use these topics as a guideline, please feel free. If you prefer to go otherwise, uh, and uh, you are also uh, very welcome. The thing here is that I really would like to ask for your participation at this moment. So use these 45 minutes of uh, uh, group work and then back to the room for final presentations on uh, this uh, peer review session. Afterwards and after the, um, the presentations, uh, of the of the um, of the groups, we will uh, have uh, a break, and after that, uh, two other presentations here from uh, from the room. So I think that is all, Sophia. Uh, so now we are at. Uh, we will uh, start again at uh, eleven fifteen for uh, who is in the room with coffee break included. And for those of you in other places in, room, in Europe, 
we will restart at 12.15 with your presentations, okay? Is this clear? I think I uh, uh, just added 15 minutes for the coffee break, so it must be somehow confusing, but I will, uh, I will summarize. 45 minutes for working in groups, 15 minutes coffee break, then presentations, okay? Is it clear for everyone? Can I have the comments from the audience online? It's fine, perfectly fine, thank you. Okay, thank you, Alessandro. So we will go now for the group work. Okay, see you soon. Let's have one question, please. Please. Yes, yes. Esa, eh, eh, are we going to, to be here with someone from Portugal in the discussion, in the online discussion? Uh, yes, uh, Sofia can join, okay? Okay, perfect. And Sofia it's... will be with you in the, in the, in the room, in the okay. online room, okay? So okay. she can help with some doubts and so on, okay? Perfect, thank you very much. Perfect, thank you, see you soon.